All right, hi Steve. Hi Serena. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And how are you? <laughs> good, good. So thank you so much for being on my YouTube channel.、Mm -hmm. I've seen so much of you on、uh, online everywhere, and I find you so inspiring. Oh, thank you. I love learning languages, and I, as an adult, as a working adult,、um, you don't have as much time. Right. You want to make sure that when you do spend time learning a language, that it's Effective, right? Correct. So, what do you think are the most effective ways of learning a language? What has really worked for you? Well, I, I've always been, a, a, you know, in favor of input-based learning. Lots of reading, lots of listening. Get the language in you. I don't worry about what I can say in the initial stages. I just want to get the language in you, in me, get used to it, and then slowly my ability to speak will come. The lots of input.、Yeah. Um, Steve, do you have any children? Oh yeah, we have.、Uh, my wife and I have、uh, two boys and five grandchildren.、Mm -hmm. Big family now, yeah, huh? Yeah. Were you interested in languages before you had kids? Well,、uh, well, yeah, because、uh, you know I'd. Studied in France. I took my university training in France, and、uh, I met my wife in Hong Kong, where I was sent by the Canadian government to learn Mandarin Chinese.、Uh, and then our children were born when we were in Japan. So by the time the kids were born, I had already learned, you know, French, Chinese, Japanese, Spanish. Wow. Okay. So what are the exact、um, number of languages that you speak right now, and what are the ones that you're most confident in? So let's say I have twelve languages that I can sort of turn on. Do you want me to name the languages?、Mm -hmm. No. Sure. Yeah. Well, okay. In order,、no? sort of in declining order, it would be sort of English, French, Japanese, Mandarin, Spanish, Swedish, German, Italian, Portuguese, Cantonese,、uh, Russian, Ukrainian.、Um, I'm not sure what I forgot, but that would take us to twelve. My、uh, Korean. 제가한국어공부했어요、uh -huh. 그렇지만、wow. 오래동안다른언어공부하고에한국어공부할시간없어요 I don't consider Korean one of the languages that I speak, but it's not far off. Like it wouldn't take me much. I just have left it alone for so long. Wow.、Um, so, how long has it been since you spoke Korean? Years. I have no idea. Lots,、ah. lots of years. Yeah, I, I went through sort of two periods. I went through sort of six months. I worked at it quite hard, and then I worked at it for another six months. So I went through these sort of periods of intensely trying to learn it. And as I said, the problem was I wanted to get into something more interesting. And in those days, I mentioned this transcription service. So I had found some good podcasts in Korean that sounded interesting. They were too difficult for me. And I, I short of paying people to transcribe, which is very expensive,、uh, so I was kind of stuck. So in Korean, most of my time was with textbooks, and so I wanted to move from the textbooks to something more interesting, but I couldn't find that. That、uh, it just wasn't available. So then I moved away and I, I dropped Korean. I went to to Russian. And, and that leads you to what you are doing now, right? Right. Links. Exactly. So、uh, we got interested in, you know, I, I had books here in German and in Spanish, and I was always, you know, I would read, and there's a, every tenth word I didn't know, and I would, you know, underline it or make a list and look it up, and then I never looked at the list again. I never remembered what I looked up in the dictionary, and so I just felt there must be a better way. So that's what my son and I decided we would、uh, we would develop. So it's fun. Wow. Oh, so, can you just tell us what is Link and what? How can people learn a language through Link? Okay, so Link, L-I-N-G-Q dot com, basically takes advantage of、uh, the internet and modern MP3 technology and uh, even uh, artificial intelligence in terms of the automatic transcription services. And there's so many different ways that I mean, I carry with me in my、uh, iPhone a library of of. Content in 30 languages. We have 37 languages at Link. In my little iPhone, there's more stuff there than was in a, a language lab in a university 20 years ago. But but the key is people don't realize they have to listen a lot. Listening is so powerful because I typically get up before my wife. I make breakfast, so I'm listening. 15 20 minutes. I clean up. That's another 10 15 minutes. Uh, I like to exercise. There's another 30 minutes. If I'm in the car, there's some more time. You can find yourself half an hour, an hour a day to listen. When you listen, you get curious because you always don't understand the same parts. So even if you listen 10 times, you won't understand the same parts. So you got to read it, and even after reading it and you listen again, you still don't understand. And th that's the process, right? You speak 20 languages now.、Mm -hmm. I'm very curious to know what kind of 
parent you were when your kids were younger.、Um, <laughs> were you? Did you push languages on them? Unfortunately, I did. And French is an official language in Canada, so we're gonna force the kids to learn French. That was not <laughs> successful. No. So、uh, if if you can get the kids interested in some way, then that's the way to go. So I mean, I know, for example, if if say you have a child that say a Korean immigrant to Canada, and very often they'll speak they'll speak English at home sometimes and speak English with. With kids at school, but maybe they have a grandparent that only speaks Korean. So now you got a genuine motivation. But then you have the situation here. You often see like immigrant. You know they're going to force their kids to learn the language of the old country. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. If the child has a natural interest, or if you can find you know TV programs or something, I just think you have to go at it very softly. Otherwise, you create a, a, a resistance. Now, when your kids start resisting、mm-hmm. and not wanting to learn, and are even like angry or upset <laughs>、uh, about it, what what do you think you should do? What do you think parents should do? Leave it, leave it, because you're building up resistance. You're, they're not gonna, you're not gonna force them to learn. My、uh, younger son, he ended up being a professional hockey player, and so he played hockey in Italy, in Austria, and in Switzerland, and then in Japan. And so now he's with his teammates, and they're speaking these languages. So now he's interested. So that's it. Then, and once a person is interested, you don't have to fight it anymore. <laughs> you know they're interested. Like if you put cartoons on the television, the kids are very young. Like in Sweden, for example, the the, the level of English in Sweden is phenomenal. All the kids can speak English very very well. Most of the television programs seem to be from England and from the U.S. So the kids sit in front of the TV and they hear the language and. If it's a cartoon or whatever, they figure it out. And so, if you can get things like that, that.、Uh, but, but I also think there's too much emphasis on English. Like if a, if the child is interested in Chinese or interested in, or even expose them to cartoons in Chinese, cartoons in Japanese and Spanish, and make them aware that there's all kinds of different languages out there. Open the brain a little bit. Make them, you know, allow them to hear different sounds.、Uh, all of that makes the brain more flexible. Yeah,、um, I think. Us parents want to believe that we are like the strongest influence on our children, but、uh, in reality, I think it's it's their friends, and it's definitely media. You know, well, media.、Uh, I saw a study once that said that you know the, the genes are like forty percent, the parenting is twenty percent,、mm. and the、mm-hmm. peers are forty percent,、uh, or the environment.、Uh, they call it the peers. Whatever they encounter outside the home、mm-hmm. is forty percent.、Mm-hmm. So the parent, the parental influence is only twenty percent. Which is counterintuitive. Most parents think that they are the, the ones, you know, that control the situation. I know. They do through、I、their、know. genes. They do through their genes. But、uh, after that, their all the wisdom that the parents impart doesn't amount to more than twenty percent,、mm-hmm. according to one study. Now I don't know how. You know, accurate that is. Speaking of environment, and also you talked about how your kids moved around to different countries internationally, and being able to go to a country that speaks. You know the language. Your target language is great, but obviously、um, sometimes that's not easy, and especially now it's not even. <laughs> it's it's pretty much impossible. So a lot of kids in Korea they go to English academies、um, are called hagwons here, and that's pretty much their exposure to English. For some people, for some families, they feel it's a little bit inevitable. They have to send them to hagwon if they are choosing a hagwon. Uh, a good academy. What do you think would be like? What's what are some good traits of a good、uh, English academy? Well, I think they should make it interesting for the kids. Let the kids develop good habits. Read a lot, even if they sit and、mm-hmm. read in class. That is better than having the teacher explain a bunch of grammar rules. I would have them do a lot of listening, watching movies. Uh, uh, the emphasis has to be on input. The emphasis has to be on creating a language environment, a rich language environment in English. If it's English, a rich English language environment. It's a matter of finding ways to expose the kids to the language in a fun, in a fun environment. Movies, songs, reading. Give them books. Give them books to read. Books and audio books. Get them reading and listening. That to me is is the best. So I speak to my kids in English,、right. and then everything else is Korean mm-hmm. input. Mm-hmm. So from my husband, their grandparents, and so on. And sometimes I'm speaking to them in English. I'll be in the elevator, and somebody else gets on, and then they'll look at us funny and be like, "Don't your kids get confused?" So, so my question to you is: For someone who speaks twenty languages,、mm-hmm. 
Honestly speaking, do you ever get confused? Well, of course I do,、uh, especially if I'm switching from one to the other, but not for very long, not for very long, and it's not a big problem. The emphasis on comprehension. But I wanted to say something. You know, I have a good friend who lives in Montreal, and、uh, his father is well is Taiwanese. His mother is Japanese. When he was 12 or 13,、uh, his parents decided that he should learn French, so they sent him to Quebec, near Montreal. And he is fluent in French, fluent in Japanese, fluent in Mandarin. He has a policy at home: one person, one language. So his father, grandpa, speaks to the kids in Chinese. Grandma speaks to the kids in Japanese. His wife is Japanese. They have a nanny from Mexico who speaks to the kids in Spanish. The kids get French at school, and they watch TV in English, and they don't get confused. The kids figure that out. If they look at you, they're gonna oh, it's English. I, I think that's a very good system. That's amazing.、Um, how do you think parents can keep their kids motivated? I mean, you mentioned you know TV, music. Uh, peers, do you think it's important for parents to think about their children's environment? Well, I, I think the the kids will find their own environment to a large extent. So the, I don't think the parents should be controlling. I mean, you don't want them to be in a bad environment, but they're going to have their friends. They're going to do their thing with their friends.、Uh, I, I think you want the kids to enjoy. So if the kids speak with you in English, you want them to enjoy that. So first of all, I wouldn't correct them. Let, no correction at all. The communication is not about correcting. It's not a lesson. It's a it's communication between mom and child. Period. And if they go through periods where they don't want to do it, leave them. Whatever you are doing now, it's not going anywhere. Like it's there.、Uh, you can try forcing, but if they really don't want to, then I would leave it because they'll come back to it. And and it's there. It's there. It's all. It's an investment in. Greater flexibility in the brain, greater familiarity with different sounds, different ways of saying things. None of that will go away. But again, with Korean, it's like you had, you were kind, you kind of became not so interested in it and a little bit frustrated with it.、Mm. So again, you took a break. Right. And so should kids. Exactly. I, I have, I haven't. Yeah. None of that is wasted. And and I'll go back. And、mm. what happens too is I go back to my Korean as I did. Just before we had our conversation, I, I found this podcast and I had it transcribed. It's like finding an old friend. It's fun to go back to stuff that you studied before and, and then go back to it. So it's, it's not lost. Yeah. Not lost. You also mentioned, you know, learning language is a slow process. Absolutely. The brain has to learn. The brain—that's what the brain is for. It learns, always learning, always reacting to things, the stimulus, experience. But the brain learns slowly. So don't be impatient. So we have to be patient with ourselves. We have to be patient. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so、okay. much, Steve. Thank you, Serena. That was I enjoyed wonderful.、It. Okay. I learned so much, and I feel so inspired. Oh, good. Bye. I'll、bye. see you next time. Okay, bye. bye.